When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I, um, I was cleaning out my grandmother's garage in, uh, in Lodi, New Jersey, and I came across a copy of Misfits Walk Among Us, and um, I had no idea what it was. I had no, I'd never, you know, I'd never heard of the band. My name is John DeRosa. I'm a singer and a musician from Brooklyn, New York. I took the record home and, um, you know, I just thought it was awesome. You know, to this day, I don't know who, whose record that was in my grandmother's garage. Um, you know, it was in Lodi, so it really could have been anybody's. It's a pretty small town and uh, those records got passed around among people. Um, but it sort of opened up, you know, all these doors for me and, uh, uh, it kind of became this obsession to find uh, find more Misfits records, uh, and me and my friends would you know go on for, you know for the next decade and basically scour every record store we could find to see what else there was out there. We didn't quite really know what we were getting. We really didn't understand the discography. We really didn't understand the time frame, but we were doing everything that we could to sort of piece it together in our own way because the information just wasn't really out there. I'd find out, you know, years and years later that, that Glenn's parents lived uh, around the block from my grandmother, so it really could have been anyone's guess. It could have been someone hanging out, and it could have just been, you know, a distant cousins of mine, and it got thrown in there. In any event, it all started with, with finding the copy of Walk Among Us in my grandmother's garage. <laughs> When I was probably about 13, a friend of mine worked at this record store called Off the Record in uh, North County in San Diego, and he got a hold of me and, and was like, dude, you gotta come up here right now. Like, we have all this Misfits and Tamane stuff that we're gonna put out uh, for sale soon, but I wanted you to check it out. So, of course, I conned my mom into taking me up there. We got, you know, got up there and, and, and there was tons of stuff, like, um, but not only vinyl, but just like random weird t-shirts and posters and, and things. Basically, I guess at the time, Gladanzig's ex-girlfriend, she had just become his ex-girlfriend, had, had lived in Encinitas um, near the this record store and, and he dumped her and so she was pissed and so she took everything that she had of his or Misfits related or whatever and um, and just sold them to the record store for, for next to nothing. I don't think she cared. I think she's probably like pretty pissed at him or whatever. So, um, so they got it really cheap and um, you know, I was only 13, so I didn't have a lot of money and or any money, and I conned my mom into loaning me some some cash for uh, for for this. This is one of the things. So yeah, I, I picked it up uh, at, the, at the record store that day and uh, um, direct from Glenn Danzig's ex girlfriend. If I, I mean, if I had a job, if I was old enough to have a job, I would have bought all of it. There was so much. There was, I mean, there was autographed Halloween seven inches. There was three hits from Hell. Autographed. I mean, everything was autographed, but there was like, you know, all the all original pressings. When I started 31G, um, I mean, I, I don't think I consciously thought this, but I think in now, especially in retrospect, when I look back, I was completely influenced by the uh, different color vinyl of each of each release that the Misfits had, and I feel that like that was definitely an influence in a lot of the early 31G releases, um, especially like Seven Inches doing like 300 on red and 100 on white and you know, some random pressing of pink or something. It's weird because everything was autographed, which I thought was kind of strange. So either he signed all of his records that he gave his girlfriend or just signed all of his records. <laughs> I don't know.